All right, so the previous videos gave us kind of a foundational conceptual understanding of what happens to vapor pressure, boiling point, freezing point, how osmotic cre pressure is created when we make a solution. So now we want to work through an example. So let's say we create a solution by dissolving 0.5 moles of glucose, C6H12O6, in 180 grams of water, and we're told it's at 22 degrees Celsius. So we want to calculate our vapor pressure of our solution, how our boiling point has changed, how our freezing point has changed, and what our osmotic pressure is. We also know this other information here, the KB and KF values specific to water, right? So just as a reminder, these are both for water because that is my solvent, right? The KF, KB values are relative to sol the solvent. And then the vapor pressure of water at the same temperature uh, for just pure water, which is 19.8 torr. So we want to look at how do we calculate these different physical properties, our colligative properties. So let's start with vapor pressure. So if I want to calculate my vapor pressure, I just need to know my mole fraction and my vapor pressure of the pure, pure solvent. Well, we have that here. And the mole fraction of water is going to be the moles of water divided by our total number of moles. So it's going to be the moles of water plus the number of moles of glucose. Okay, because that's the total in my solution. Now again, remember when we talked about this, we said this is very different from other concentration units that we've specifically looked at because we're looking at, quote unquote, the concentration or amount of our solvent, which is water. So now if I want to calculate my vapor pressure, this is going to be equal to my mole fraction. So I have 180 grams. If I convert that to moles, we use our molar mass. That's going to be 10 moles. Okay, so we'd have 10 moles of water divided by our total. So 10 moles plus 0.5 moles of uh, our, um, excuse me, glucose. And then we multiply that by our 19.8 torr. Okay. And so that's our pure solvent, water at 22 degrees Celsius. So we're going to get a vapor pressure of 18.9 torr. Okay, so we see that my vapor pressure is lower at this same temperature for water, okay? Uh, and that's because some of the space at the surface, right, is occupied by our glucose, okay? So now we have our vapor pressure that we calculated and it's lower, it was 19.8, now it's 18.9. So now we see that that lower vapor pressure leads to a higher boiling point. And so if I wanna calculate the boiling point, I need to know my KB value, which I looked up in a table, molality, and then uh, the event Hoff factor. Okay, so if I want to calculate the molality, it's going to be moles of solute. So that's going to be 0.5 moles of my solute divided by kilograms of solvent. So we have 180 grams. So that would be 0.18 kilograms. And so we get a concentration of 2.8 molality. Okay, and so now I can go ahead and calculate how my, my boiling point changes. And so that's going to be this constant here, 0.512, times the molality, times our Van Hoff factor. Now, our glucose here is a molecular compound. And so when I dissolve one mole of glucose, I get one mole of solute particles. And so our Van Hoff factor here would be one. It's going to be different. It could be greater than that if we have an ionic compound that, de uh, not, that ionizes or breaks apart, okay, dissociates, and gives us multiple pieces. Okay, so that we're gonna see it's gonna be one. So our change in boiling point is gonna be 1.4 degrees Celsius, okay? And so that tells us that my boiling point is gonna be 1.4 degrees Celsius greater than the normal boiling point of water, which is 100 degrees Celsius. So that lets me know that my actual boiling point is going to be 100 plus my 1.4, or 101.4 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now we found our boiling point, we found our vapor pressure, right? And again, remember this is my change in boiling point. So we would take my normal boiling point of water, 100 degrees Celsius, which I could look up in a table just like my KF and KB values, and I would add my, my boiling point change. So now we go to a similar application for our freezing point. So our change of freezing point is gonna be equal to KF times molality. It's the same concentration solution, I didn't change that. Same solute, so my Van Hoff factor value is one. 
we're gonna have a different K value, a different constant, because we're looking at how the freezing point changes, not the boiling point. And so for water, it's 1.86. So if I wanted to look at the change in freezing point, it's gonna be our constant here, 1.86 degrees Celsius per molality times our concentration, and one for our Van Hoff factor. So our change in freezing point here is gonna be equal to 5.2 degrees Celsius, okay? Now what that tells me is that I've decreased by 5.2 degrees Celsius. So the actual freezing point is gonna be our normal freezing point, zero degrees Celsius minus our change, and that's gonna be negative 5.2 degrees Celsius. So we've decreased by 5.2 degrees Celsius by adding in, in this case, uh, our solute here, glucose, okay? So these two are very much related to each other, same concentration unit. And again, remember we use molality because molality is temperature independent. Moles and kilograms do not change with temperature. Now let's move to our last colligative property. Our last colligative property is uh, our osmotic pressure. So we wanna figure out what's the osmotic pressure of this solution? I need to know the molarity, R. We know the R value uh, for the gas constant and then our temperature in Kelvin. Well, if I want to find molarity, excuse me, I'm going to need moles of our solute per liters of solution. Okay. Well, I know I have 0.5 moles of our, our glucose, and we want to find out well what volume do we have? Well, in order for me to find my volume, I see that I have yeah 180 grams. Okay, but it's not just water. We also have uh, our 0.5 moles of our solute here, our glucose, okay? So what we need to figure out is we need to use density to find the volume of our solution. Well, we know density, we can figure out our volume, but we need to know our mass. Well, if we wanna find the mass of our solution, it's gonna be the mass of water plus the mass of our glucose that we added in there, right? So if I have 180 grams of water, I could figure out the mass of glucose because I know I added 0.5 moles. We could use our molar mass to find the number of grams and we would find that it's 90.2 grams of glucose. So our total mass, 270.2 grams. That's for my solution, right? That's the glucose and the water. So now I know my, the mass, the density, we, we were given the density of our solution and we can use that to find our volume now. And we would see uh, that our volume ends up being 239 milliliters, okay? <clears throat> and so now we have our volume, we know moles and volume of our solution, we can convert that to liters and we can get molarity. And so we would find the molarity of our solution is gonna be equal to 0.5 moles all over the uh, volume, 0.239 liters. And so we're gonna get to a molarity of 2.08, okay? Which then we could go ahead and plug back into our molarity, our gas constant, and our temperature here, okay? And we would find out that we would get to a uh, pressure, excuse me, osmotic pressure of 50.7 atmospheres, okay? So we run out of room here for me to show you that, but what we do is we take our molarity and plug it in here. We'd use our gas constant, 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin, and then our temperature, 22 degrees Celsius, converted to Kelvin, and we would go ahead and we would find our osmotic pressure, okay? And so we see in each of these uh, calculations, it's really important for us to look at what type of uh, cal concentration unit we're using. Are we using mole fraction rel relative to the amount of our solvent? Are we using molality, right? We use molality for these two because as we add more and more solute, the temperature that our solution is gonna freeze at or boil at changes. And so we wanna use a temperature independent concentration unit because it's not gonna change with temperature. Whereas with our, our mole, or, uh, osmotic pressure, we could use molarity. 
And the reason why we can use molarity is because we're looking at one specific temperature. Our solution is going to, our volume of our solution changes as temperature changes. And so we wouldn't want to use molarity for a change in boiling point or change in freezing point because as we change the temperature, our volume expands a little bit, which would change our concentration. And so we want to use something that is not going to change if we increase or decrease the temperature of our solution as we're trying to make it boil or make it freeze. Okay, so hopefully this gives us an idea of how we can look at these four physical properties or colligative properties that are affected by a solute being added into a solvent to create a solution.